טוב, ארני. שבוע טוב. מזל טוב, איך זה שלום זוכר? Very, very nice. It was outdoors. They had almost 100 people, you know, in and out. Young people. It was very nice. Nice weather. Warm, very warm in the valley. Um, okay. Uh, nice. Ernie, are you on for tomorrow morning? I'm not. I, I have like 20 patients in the hospital that I have to see in the morning, unfortunately. So you're not on for 8.30? No. no. Okay. So we're learning at 7.30 before the, the Novi share? We could learn, is that, yeah, we could learn it. No, no. I'd like, to learn it, I'd like to learn it 7.30 in the morning. It's too, late for, in the, it's too late for me, man. No, what's too late? It's too late. I can't. Okay, you'll just send me the recording. 7.30 is difficult because the shark is 8 o'clock. You want to do, you want to do, we could do nine o'clock at night, tomorrow night, after the Navi Shear. Mm, All right. No. Ah. Okay, so you tell me, seven in the morning? 7.30, eight o'clock, 8.30, you okay, tell me? Seven, okay, I'll make it 7.30. Okay, everyone, 7.30 or no? For me, it's not good, I mean. I'm... When is it good for well, you? What's good for you, Walter? I mean, at 7.30, you won't be finished till what time? I'll finish by eight o'clock. Yeah, that's a very tight. Okay, it's fine. If you finish by eight o'clock, I may have to leave a few minutes earlier. Okay, no problem. We'll have a tape of it. You know what? You'll send me the tape. Mario, send me the tape. Okay. Okay. Okay, hang on. Let's say good night. Um, Listen, if you can handle it, I can come and help you. And as long as we split this as a profit, I'll give up gold for it. Stop <laughs> complaining about it. <laughs> Cut it out. Boch Hashem. Oh, Boch Hashem. Boch Hashem that people are sick? <laughs> no, Boch Hashem that you are able to, to give them a refresh later. I am going to try. I am definitely going to try. That's the Boch Hashem that they sick, but forbid. Okay. It's ER is coming. Ani Hashem Rofecha. Just remember that. Ani Hashem Rofecha. I love that. Ani Hashem Rofecha. Wow. wow. Yeah, that's what right. it is. Right. Ani Hashem Rofecha. The yeah. world needs a refua. Okay. So we are on 17B on the bottom. Pani Mizrachu Marvai Nusin in the Rebbe. Machlokas, how the Shulchan was arranged. Koine Rebbe was arranged east to west. Because remember, the base of Migdash is aligned east to west, right? Kodesh Kodoshim is in the west. You enter the base of Migdash in the east. So the Hechel is divided by a line right down the middle. So the Shulchan is to the north and the menorah is to the south, right? So when you walk to the Hechel, the menorah was to the left, the Shulchan was to the right. And there's a line drawn. So if you had the tables Right, we, they said that there were Moshe Rabbeinu's table and then 10 tables aligned on either side of it. So then if they're aligned east-west, so the shulchans could stay in the north. Because remember, there's, we'll see, there's, it's 40 amas wide. So if you divide it by a line, 20 amas on this side, 20 amas this side. So if you line up the shulchans east-west, there's no problem. We'll see in a minute. Right? My name is Rabbi. Rabbi Shimon Omer Tzofon Vidor Mayim Nesuni. Rabbi Shimon says, no, they were lined up across that midline, going from north to south. And the Gemara explains that. In order to use the table, the table has to be in the north. So if you line them up five going this way and five going this way parallel to each other east-west, the shulchanos will not cross over the midline over to the south. So the, and therefore all 10 tables, could you could place the lechem upon him on them. But man dom of the dom nimsa shulchan bedoro. It's going to be a problem because the shulchan is going to be in the dorum and you can't 
uh, use it there. Here the Gemara Blyb says Akasha. In the Bavli, um, they, they explain that according to this Mandarmer, if you line them up all 10 in a row, so then they'll cross over to be in the door. But if you line them up five and five, it won't be a problem. So that's Machlokas Yerushalmi and Bavli regarding that, which is not uncommon. Then it says, Umenor B'tzofo. The Baraisa said, So it says, when Arbit Sof, Atania Shukla and Nos Machatia Bais Vilifnim, the Shuk was halfway um, between the entrance of the Heichal towards the Kodesh Kodoshu. Moshech Ben Akoisel Beis Amasu Mechza. The Shuk was drawn two and a half Amas away from the wall, from the north wall, Klapiat Sofon. U Menorah connect the Bedorim, and the Menorah is opposite the Shulchan in the south. And Mizbech Azov Ayanosim Bemsa. And the golden Mizbech where the Ketoyus was offered is in the middle. So how can you tell me the menorah is Bitsafa? Then Habayas Choilik Sabemsa. Bemsa Bas. Choilik is Habayas Mechetz of Lifnim, Mosha Kimo Klape Tsafon. Chutz, the kul na yanos mishlisha bayis v'lifnim. They, if if you if you use the kodesh kadoshim, you add another length of the kodesh kadoshim. They were positioned about one third inwards. That means if you two thirds there were no kalim, and then from one thirds in towards, all these kalim were positioned. Then, as from anoyas asher shloimah. Just like we said that Shlomo made 10 Shulchanois, he also made 10 Menoirois. Shunem Rabayas is Menoirois at Zohav, Esser Kemishpoto. Vaiten Bech Lashem Yemin, Vashem Mismol. Excuse me. Bech. Hey Miyamin, Vehe Mismol. Five to the right, five to the left. Now, ain't tamer chomish but tzavim chomish but darv aloyin amenok sheir lebedaro. How can you line them up so that be five in the south and five in the north? The menorah is only kosher if it's in the north, in, in the south. El bedaro. Shneimar v'sam menorah noicha chashul chanal yer chamish kan temana. So ma tamod loymer? How do you understand chamish mimin or chamish mismol? El chamish mimin menoyros or shul moishu v'chamish mismol means they were all in the south except five were placed. To the right of the menorah of Moshe, and five were placed to the left. When they lit the menorah, they only lit the Moshe Rabbeinu one. In the Divrei Yom, it says, No, it's Rabbeinu. No, when the coin went in to light the menorah, he lit all the menorahs. Plural. Then, when it said that Moshe made the Bizbeach, excuse me, the menorah out of gold, Zov Sogur. Well, that's a continuation of that Pasuk. Zov Sogur. He Mechalo Zov. It was made out of pure gold. Hein Kilo Zov Shal Moshe. That means. Moshe Rabbeinu, he, Shlomo, in you in building those new ten menorahs, there had been some gold left over from Moshe Rabbeinu. They used up all that gold that Moshe had purified. And the Gemara explains: Turn away to B'shem Asi. Hayy Shlomo noitel elaf kikarizov. Shlomo would take a thousand talents of gold, and they were impurities. Machnis and lakur, they put it in a kiln. It was one to a thousand purification. 
Very, very pure gold. The menorah that Moshe built in the midbar, I saw you say a dinner zov. There was one extra dinner left over. They put this in the kiln 80 times. It remained the same weight. Is that so? Once it reached full purity, then no matter how much you try to distill it, it remains the same. Let me ask you, uh, Ernie, first of all, um, uh, Moshe, I mean, um, uh, Bezalel built that menorah. Was that the same menorah that we used in the base Migdash? Yes. First of all, no. Remember, Moshe, because it said over there, Zeh, the, Miskasha, they, they had a problem with building the menorah. They didn't know how to do it. So he had a special Navua to Moshe. So Moshe built Moshe, it. But, but Bezalel didn't build it. Bezalel built it. Moshe may have had the Navua, but Bezalel built it. Okay, but it was called Menorah's Moshe. Moshe, but, but it was the same menorah that. So, so, so it says that Menorah's Moshe was in the base of Mikdash. And Shlomo Amelech built another 10, five on the right of the menor- Moshe's menorah and five on the left. One Mandamar holds that every day when they lit the menorah, they only lit Moshe's menorah. The other Mandamar said, no, they lit all 11, Moshe's and the other 10. Machlekes Tanoi, regarding that. Okay. Mishnah. Shloish, Shloishas are Shoifers Hayyubimigdash. There were six, 13 collection boxes in the base of Midrash. The cost of Alei and Taklin, these are the 16, excuse me. These are the 13. They had names on them. And when you came to the base of Midrash, you could donate wherever you wanted to donate. One said Taklin Chaditin, new Shkolin. For example, you, you had not given your Maxi Sashekel for this year. You happened to be in Yushalayim. You could put your Maxi Sashekel into that box. Now let's say you owed Maxis shekel for last year. You could make up for last year. Then kinin. The kinin were pairs of birds. For example, the yoledes. The, yo- the yoledes had to bring a pair of birds. The goizle oila. Now let's say you could also bring two birds as a, as a donation for an Ola. Then Eitzim, you could contribute to the box where the money went to purchase the wood or Lavona, the spice that was placed on top of the Lechem Apodim. Or Zohav Lakapoiris, gold that was used to, you know, plate the Kodesh Kodoshim and anything else that needed gold plate. Shisha Linadavar. Six were for donative olos. Now the Gemara, the Mishnah explains each case. That's every year's new shkali. Atikin means Mishlohevi Eshtaked Whoever didn't give last year gave this year. Kinin means hein torin v'goizli oila. Excuse me. Kinin hein torin. Those are doves, pairs of d- doves. V'goizli oila. These were pigeons. Hein bnei yoyna. Kulan oil is the Rabbi Yehuda. According to Rabbi Yehuda, both of these pairs of birds would be offered as oilos. The Chachamim, I mean, no. Kinin means echad chatas vechad oila. Kinin is one thing. Women who gave birth had to bring a chatas and an ola. So they would bring two birds. One is a chatas, one is an ola. And then if you put your money in a box that was labeled goizle oila, it's kulan oilos. 
You could give a donative offering where two birds would be offered as an ola. Oilas, oilas ha'oif. Then, ha'oimer harelai eitzim, if somebody made a nadova, he wants to bring wood, lo yifchos mishnei gzirim, he had to bring two logs of wood, minimum of two logs. And the Gemara will go through the shear of how big the logs have to be. Levona lo yifchos mikoimetz. By a levona, you shouldn't have less than a koimetz. Right, a fistful. Zav lo yifchos mi dinner zav. If you gave gold, you had to give at least a dinner, which is a gold coin. Then shisha, there were six boxes of nadova. Nadova mayusim, but what do they do with the money in that box? Loikim ba oilois. They would buy animals, which would be offered as oilois. Now, what do you do with an oila? Habasar l'shem, the meat of a korban is completely burnt l'shem. Oirois l'kohanim, the hides of an animal that was offered as noila were given to the kohanim. Zemitish darsh yehoida koin gadol. The following pasuk was darshan by yehoida koin gadol. In Vayikra it says asham hu, asham asham l'shem. Zeakla, kolshu ba mishum chates, u mishum ashama, ilakach behen oilois. That means if you had money left over, let's say they had put it in a box for an ola, or an asham. And you had leftover money. So the question is, what did you do with the leftover money? So they bought oilis with it. And a, a oilis, the Mishnah is reminding it says, Habas Lashem, the oilis Lakohanim, which the meat goes to Hashem and the hides go to the Kohanim. But so in a sense, there's a partnership. Kodesh Baruch Hu gets some of it and the Kohanim gets some of it. Nimsu shnei ksuvim kayamin, asham l'ashem, because Hashem gets the meat, v'ashem l'kayin. Because normally an asham is eaten by the Kohanim. In this case, no, but at least they get the hides. V'oymer kesav asham v'kesav chatos lo yuva beis Hashem l'kohanim yiyu. So both sukim are fulfilled. The Rabbi said that this box to put money into by pairs of birds was not in Yerushalayim because they were concerned Shamatomus Achas, one of the owners would have died who had given money in the Pavaninsu. Remember, we've learned so they, to solve that problem, they didn't have that box. Frank the Gemara, it's not so about Isha Shamra Rea like Ken, somebody who made a woman who gave birth and then wants to donate a pair of birth. Maybe to make Ken, but no snow for they put it in that box. And that night, she could go home and eat Kotchim because she'd gotten her Kapora. That the quantum were lazy and had not offered those korbonas yet, and and so we see clearly at a coin choishesh shemad mechatas meisus moravas behem that they're not concerned about this issue that maybe somebody who had donated the money had died. So the Gemara says ki kormin mechatas shemesu balea badai. It's only a problem if you know for sure that one of the owners had died. If, if it's just a suffix, we don't have to worry about that. The Amrin and Nivvor Dalit Zuze, the Nishtabinar, why not take like a, a few dollars from that box, throw it away in Yama Melach, as if this will take care, we won't use a certain amount of money because maybe somebody died. But that's only if you hold Brera. Right. Rabbi Yehuda didn't say that because he doesn't hold in general in Shas, 
of the concept of retroactive designation of Breira, so you can't use that technique of throwing away some of the money. So he said, Rabbi Yudah Shita was not put the box at all in Yerushalayim. Rabbi Yusuf Be'i Rav Bon, Am Rav Ba Bar Bar Mamal Boy, Am Arealai Eitz, the person didn't say Arealai Eitz him, plural. He said, I want to bring wood, singular. Maybe Gizer Echad. You could bring one log. Am Rav Lezer, what do you mean? Masni Samra, our Mishnah said, but, <clears throat> Not like that. It's uh, a <coughs> korban A wood is its own korban. That in order for wood to be a korban, you need at least two. The logs have to be an ama by an ama, like a square ama. One side was a large ama and the other side was a small ama. Remember, we had an ama of six and amas of five. So that's the minimum shear of the wood. Rav Chorni B'Shem Ravami came in tortni, like a stick that they used to, like a walking stick. The grill was on the ama by ama. So you needed sort of a smaller one, so it would be able to fit on the grill without sticking out. Like when we when they described the grill, it says that the grill was an ama by an ama. So by having a smaller amount of wood, it fit properly. The Mishnah said, The spice, you shouldn't have less than a kmitza. <clears throat> it says that the koimets has to be a, like a remembrance. Maz karma loyalan mole koimets always has to be a fistful off of askar amerkan mole koimets. This was the one, this was the koimets that went along with the minchas chote. If a person, for example, had walked into the base of Migdash Tomei, didn't know. So he brings a sliding scale chattis. If he's wealthy, he brings an animal. Less wealthy, he brings birds. If he's very poor, he brings a mincha. So there also talks, talks about a kmitz of avas karasa. So maybe I'll say, there it's two fistfuls. Maybe avas kara murakan shnei kmotzim. And also by the shulchan, they had two cups of spice. There you had to do kmitzas. Under the klum lom the kmitz ella mi minchas choyte. We don't learn it from lechem. Our we learn it from minchas choyte. Malal and kmitz a chaser posel. If you had, if you use less the kmitza, would be posel. Avkan kmitz a chaser posel. But you don't need two. One is enough. Amr Rav Yosef Milsa the Rebbe Ila. Amra, Amisnadiv Minch Levona, somebody who donates spice, Mavia Bakoin Sir Shal Koin. You have to bring it, the fist, it's got to be at least a fistful of a coin. He says, no, even the Balaboyas himself, whatever his fistful holds, if he brings that amount, that would fulfill the donation that he makes. Zav lo yifchas mi dinner. We said that the coin. It shouldn't be less than a gold coin. That's if it, you know, it's, if, if it has a face on it, so then it has to be a gold coin. But if, if, if he didn't say tsura, if he didn't mention the word coin, maybe if he looks, you know, he could bring even a fork. Can bring any golden object, it didn't have to be a gold coin. Then the Mishnah said there were six boxes Lenadova. So where do we get six? Keneged, Shisha Bate Avois. So every week, right, there were 24 Kohanic families. Each week, one family would come. Each family was divided into six Bate Av. 
So they worked Sunday through Friday, six days of the week. On Shabbos, all the six fam, all the Bakhtay Av could come to the base of Mikdash. So, so there shouldn't be fights. They had six boxes of money that went, so each family would be taken care of Sunday through Friday. No, the six were six different kinds of animals that you could bring. Par, Egel, Sawir, Ail, Gdit, Flev. Right? A cow, a calf, a goat, a ram, a small goat, and a small sheep. Shmuel Amr Keneged Shisha Korbonois. Chatis, Ashonois, Menachois, Asir Saifa, Kinezovim, Kinezovois. Right. Zavim and Zavis is one. Zavim of the of the Yoletis is two. Chatis Asham Mincha and the Asir Saifa, which was brought by the Kohen Gadol every day, you could contribute to that. These types of types of uh, donations were the vast majority of donations. So that's why they had many boxes for it. Right when they were finished, they brought all this money before the king and before Yehuda Akoyin. This is Yoshia Melech. There were basic two types of donations you could make: one for Berak Abayis, the other to buy Kalim. That's one pshat. The other pshat is that they, they arranged all these donations two different times of the year. Tani Rabbi Shmuel, the Dava Achas. Everything was one donation. Dichsi. Vayom Ramelech. Vayasu Aron Echad. They made one box. Vayneu Behechal Beis Hashem. And they put it in Beis Amigash. Vayikov Chor Bedalto. They put a hole in it. So it was one donation, not many. Ay Vadichsi Vayom Ramelech. Which seems that there was a second one, one on the inside, one on the outside. So again, it's not one. That was needed because Tomei people couldn't go inside. So they needed one outside. This is the, because this pasuk seems to go against the one where that they made some of these donations into Kalim. But Lechora, the, the other psukim suggests that there were two types of donations, one for general temple, temple upkeep and the other one for Kalim. Haralach Perak Yigimel Shafris, Haralach Perak Yigimel Shafris, Haralach Perak Yigimel Shafris. Mishnah. Mosh Nimsu Ben Ashkolim. Let's say. You found some coins that were dropped on the floor between the boxes, right? And and there was a box called Shkolim and a box called Nadova. So which one did you put the money in? So it had to do with proximity. We learned that from Egla Rufa, right? That if you find a corpse near a town, you measured which was the closest town. Here they did the same thing. Karv Shkolim. If the coins were found close to the box of the shkolim, yiplu shkolim. If they were found closer to the nadova, yiplu nadova. What if it was equidistant, mechzo mechzo? So here we go, lechumra. And since nadova were karbonois, and the shkolim, uh, or were olos, were a higher level of karbonois because they were all oilos, while the shkolim bought all sorts of karbonate sibor, which weren't always olos. So you, it, they would go in the dove. That's how the Gemara is going to explain why they would go in the dove. Now, there was a box for Eitzim and then a box for Spice. But Eitzim Levona, Karvla Eitzim, Yipla Eitzim. It was close to the wood, you, it went for the wood. It was close to Levona, Yipla Levona. Metzel, Metzel, Yipla Levona. Because that was Lemaisa, 
wood is only used as a hechsher to burn korbanes. The spice itself is offered as a korban on top of the mincha. Now, ben kinin, which is a chatas and an ola, which we said, according to one of the mandomrim, that a yoletus would buy. Legozli ola to a pair of ola birds. So again, kar of the kinin, yiplu the kinin. Kar of the gozli oila, yiplu the gozli oila. Here's the trick. Metzl, metzl, yiplu gozli oila. Because a chatas is eaten by the kohanim. Oilas are completely consumed. So an oila is a higher level of kutship. So again, if it's a suffake, we go to chumrah and you put it in the ola box. Now, let's say in your home, you had a box where you kept your chulin. And then you had another box where you kept your meister sheni because you have to treat them differently in terms of kedusha and all that, tahara. Now, so let's say something fell out of one of these boxes. What if it's half and half? You always, if we go through proximity, why did you give me one of the alternatives could have been shkolim lekinim? Because Rav Ovin B'Shem Rav Pinnas came in buchlir hayu oisin. It was made in a circle. So this these boxes were not in a straight line. They were in a circle. So therefore th- those two never came together. Then metzal metzal yipul in the dova. Then we said if, if it was between the shkol and the nadova went in the nadova, 50-50. Lo tzrich adolo metzal metzal yipul in the shkol is the boy meymar shema yipul in the shira lishka. Because you might think maybe it should go because the, the remnant funds, if the, whatever was left over from the, from the shkol and went to build sort of the streets. So istaba meimer metzah lemetzah kamisha meis. Means other people learn that when you do it metzah lemetzah, it's as if somebody had donated something and then died. We had heard Rav Yudah asking Shmuel, right? Rav Yudah Shal Shmuel Hifri Shiklo Meis that let's say somebody donated his matzah shekel and died. Armel Yiplu Nadova. So, so this case where you would find a shekel in between the boxes is no worse than that. So, just like that is Yiplu Nadova. This case also goes Yiplu Nadova. Now, when we said Asir Sa'efa Shalom, that means every day the Kohen Gadol would bring an, a mincha called the Minchas Kohen Gadol from Asir Sa'efa, and you could contribute to that. Now, what, what, let's say there's extra money in the Asir Sa'efa box. <laughs> What do you do with it? You gotta, you gotta throw it away in the, yams, in the Dead Sea. No, you can do it for Olas um, Nadova. The Kasha Yesh Chatas Krevo Oila. Can a Chatas be offered as Noila? Chiske Bishem of Shem and Lokish Tanoi. Tznai Bezdin who, ala moistra sheyikru vo'oilis. Bezdin already instituted when they created this system of putting money in boxes that if it was ever any extra money, the extra money would go oilis. Even though in general, chatas cannot be converted to an oil. It was like a tznai Bezdin, like when we say, hariyat mekudesh asli kedas moshev Yisrael. We follow the gedorim of, of, of how the chazal made the, the rules. Now, if a woman, though, put her money into the box because she needed a kapora and her coins fell halfway and it's not offered as a chatez, 
Haisha Zos Babayim is Kaparis. How does this woman get Kapar so she can eat Kachim? Again, when they, when they, that whoever is Mesapik is a Kinu Mesapik is a, as a Psulos. The, the, he would supply replacement for even ones that became possible. So the same way he has to, the, the, the vendor who provides the birds has to supply the replacement for the woman. Now, what about the Mishnah? Why didn't the Mishnah ask about coins between the Ktoris and wood and Levon Lazov? So I, I, it didn't, it, it only gave us certain cases of it. Why didn't it do all of them? So Tanisa Besoifa, when the Mishnah concluded, Zach Klau, Holchanach Arkov, Metzel, Metzel, Achmir, that gives us the rule to, in each case that if it, you if it's proximity, you put it into the box that is closest to it. And if it's not, you put it in the one that's more machmir. Gives you a general rule. Moshe nimtu lufnei would come up to Shalim, and they would bring a lot of Meister Shani money. And most of that Meister Shani money, the Meforshim explain, was used to buy shlomim. Because people came up, oil regal, they had to eat with their families, they had to buy shlomim so they could offer korbonus and eat meat. So the majority of money found in front of the butchers was Meister Shani money. That's why the Mishnah says, Moshe Nimsel, they serve the oil of Meister. And therefore, that money has to be treated like Meister. However, Baharabai is chulim. If you found the money on Harabai, then it was then it was chulim. Even during Yontif. Because in the base of Midrash, we include people coming the entire year in terms of people bringing money. And money of chulim is more common, even on the Harabais. Right in Jerusalem, if you find money in the street, it was considered chulin. However, vishasa regel akol meiser during yontif itself. Then, where, no matter where you found the money, even the harabayis was considered meiser shei money. That's money. What about baser? You find meat. So baser shenim se bazara evorim. So evorim are whole limbs. Now, whole limbs were offered only as olos. So if you find a whole limb, you have to treat it as an olo. Chatichos, now small pieces, the Kohanim got to eat the chatis. So you don't need a whole limb. You divide up limbs into small pieces like we eat. So if you found a, a piece of steak, a rib steak, raw, so it was treated as a chatis. Now, what if you found meat in Yushalayim? Since, as we explained, uh, people eating meat in Shalim most of the time it was shlamim, not chulin. So you have to treat. Now, what's the difference? If you find meat that's chulin, you can do anything you want with it. But if you find meat that's shlamim, you can only eat it for two days. So there are different dinim that apply to this. These tip achat is going to be eaten for one day. So how you treat this meat depends on how this Mishnah characterizes it. Now, you, you, what do you do with it? Can't eat it. Zev is that to Uber Tsurasso. You get it, you have it nifsal belina. You let it go until the next morning. The Yatsalabesa Srefa. And then you have to burn it. <clears throat> because just in case it might have been a kosher thing, you can't burn a kosher thing. No matter what, we let everything be became puzzled through Neusser, through Lina, and then we burnt it. No. Chazal said, any meat that you take your mind off of, if you have a Hesachadas, you haven't seen the meat constantly, at a minimum, it's tummy. You have to you have to treat it as tummy. 
So therefore, therefore, you let it get nifsal belim and then you burn it. However, nimtsa bigvulin, let's say you found meat outside of your shalim. If you find big limbs, a vorim are treated as nevelas. The chatichos, but small pieces are permitted. Now, when you say permit, doesn't mean you can eat it. It's not tame. We'll see, basar shenis salim in ayin is also not kosher to eat. You have to keep your eye because it could have been replaced by a, a tray piece of meat by a bird. Mishasa regel, shabasar maruba. There's so much meat of evorim mutaris. Even large limbs do not have to be treated as nevela, would all be considered permitted. Now, Lotzrucha de lo bar abayis koidish. It said that coins found on our bias is not hegdish, it's holy. So Rabbi Borov Chia B'Shem Rav Yechanan Chazaka Shen Akoyin Moitz Min Alishka Mos At Shemachan Al Abayma. What's the chiddush? The chiddush is that either could be hegdish coins that were taken out of these lishkos boxes. Kohanim were so careful that they would always be poide, right? They were machal the money onto a beima, transfer the kedusha of the money to a beima, so the the, the co- that way people wouldn't be stuck if they found coins having hegdish coins and the, and they're using. Coins that were hegdish, they'd be chayv me'ila. Then we talked about finding meat, basar shenimsa. Ablazer b'shem roshia, yisiach da'as ton ibritzura. Any meat that you take your attention out of, so there's a there's a uh, uh, it might be tomei. You need to let it be puzzled through noise or through lean, and then burn it. You can't burn it right away because it might be a, a kosher piece of meat. It's only a suffix. So by allowing it to uber tzura, you'd be allowed to burn it without any problem. Amra v'shia masnis and amra came to uber tzura so the yotzel beis asrefa. In fact, our Mishnah said it. You've got to do two uber tzura, take it out of the beis asrefa. Amra v'yosi, the yehus is this so laachlo ein atayachol shem in iskakel tzura so. You can't eat it, but you can't burn it either. You can't burn it because it might be kosher. So that's why you need to have it nifsal through lina v'yatzalabesasreif. But then we said, if you found meat, not in Yushalayim, elsewhere, we treated it differently. Right? Big pieces are considered nevelas. And loikin aliyam yishum nevelu. If you eat it, you get malchus. Must be samra kain. Our mission says the same thing. A very nevelus, limbs of nevelu, the chatichos, but small pieces of mutaros. And chatichos mutaros loy mamish. It doesn't mean that they're actually permitted to eat. It just means it's a suffix. But you wouldn't be give malchus to somebody who was a suffix, but you gave malchus because there it's mamish nevela. Let's say they were strung together like you bought a bunch of hot dogs strung together in a string. So there, People would only do that if the food is edible, not nevela. So even if you found it in the harapai, you'd be able to eat it if the meat were strung together. And then we have the famous case. Teisha chanuyos. You have nine butcher shops, moicheres baser, nevela. Nine of them are selling non-kosher meat. Va'achas moicheres baser shkuta. One, there's 10 stores, nine are selling Nevela, one is selling kosher.
Yitzchalfu lo. He forgot which store he bought his meat from. Choyshesh. So any time you, you go into a store, that's considered kavua. It's something stable. And kavua is treated as mechza u mechza domi. We don't go after the, necessarily the majority. We say he could have been in a coat, but it's 50-50. And since the vela, it's a suffix. 50-50 is a suffix. And the vela is an iser deray, so you're not allowed to eat it. Now, what if it's separated? It's not that you went into the store and bought it and you forgot which store you went in, but you found the meat outside of the stores. So then, so then since there were nine non-kosher stores, the meat would be treif. Now, the opposite case, you have nine stores selling kosher meat. One is selling treif. And you went inside and bought meat. You went home and you forgot which store you went to. Again, called Kavua Kemetzo Metzodami, and it's considered a sofake, and uh, you can't eat it. However, if you had picked up the piece of meat outside of the stores, Lunim says Holchanacharav would be kosher. Now, in Psakaloch and Yoradeya, we, we don't eat that meat either because. It's basr shenis alim and ayin. It's meat that somebody took their eye off. And rechoshet, maybe a bird had taken away the kosher meat because la locha, we go after rov. It would have been a kosher meat, but maybe a bird flew away with it and brought a non-kosher bird. So meikaradin, we don't eat it. But meikaradin, it's kosher. You find meat in the hands of a goy. It's as if you find it in the public market. And again, it doesn't make a difference if you find it in the hands of the goy. If the majority of the stores are kosher, we would also, if the majority of the butchers, we assume that the goy also might have bought it from a kosher store. That's what Rav Yechlin says. Blazer Berebi Chanya Hayamasmich Lerav Monachama Lachan Aramoy. Rav Lazer was walking with Rav Mona. And Mekta Min Suse, a non-Jew had, had a, was riding a horse, was holding a piece of meat, he dropped it. No, actually, it was a dead horse. And a goy chopped, I'm not sure he was dead, it could have been Abram and Achai as well, but whatever. A piece of the meat was chopped from a horse and brought outside. So, Umaf Armalek, Hidam Rav Yochanan, Anim Sabi Adnachri, Kinim Sabi Platya. Would Rav Yochanan say that even though the majority of the butcher stores here are kosher, in this case, would Rav Yochanan say that if you found meat in the hand of the goy, would be permitted? Armalek came. No, Kenam Rav Yosi. It's only Vehein Shiro Sayotzim and Makul and Shal Yisrael. When do we say that meat that you find in the hands of a goy would be permitted to eat? That's only if you physically saw the goy emerging from a kosher butcher store. Otherwise, it would be trade. Chad Bar Nashbit Sipoirin. There was a, a Jew who lived in Sipoiri. And Ozel boy Mizbin koifid min tabacha. He went to buy meat from a butcher. Veloyovle. The butcher didn't give him any meat. The butcher was having a fight with this Jew. So the Jew told a certain goy, go in and buy it for him. Isolate. Armele. Loy nazbis. Did I force him? I didn't bring you nevela to eat.
the butcher claimed that he sold non-kosher meat to the Roman because this guy was in a fight with the Jew. He didn't want the Jew to benefit from the fact that the Jew sent the, the non-Jew in there to buy a piece of meat. So he had said, you know, this was a, I sold him a piece of trace meat. But Rebbe said, you know, you can't. So then people wanted to say, okay, maybe we shouldn't eat in any of the kosher butcher stores in Sipori because this, where is this guy getting non-kosher meat from? So Rebbe said, you don't have to believe this guy that because of this animosity between these two Jews, doesn't give him the power to usher all the meat that are bought in the butcher stores in Sipori. Rav Nachos Tamon. Rav moved to Bovil. And he saw Chavs of Mekil and Aleim. They were very makel that people would leave meat by Goyim. And he was machmer and said it, it, that if you do that, it's going to trafe up the meat. And you can't eat it. This is the concept of Basra Hashem Yisalim and Ayim. And we're going to tell some stories about cases like this and how the halacha went. Okay. So Mirza Hashem. Mir